Rob, are you sad that you can't say that's a nice sheet flow or look at those pillows? Oh, there's a white thing floating. Is mm. it a cucumber? Oh! oh. oh. Un undulating holothurian. Yes. Nice. When you get a chance, Dave, you can zoom in on the undulation. Look at that. Wow. How is that the most efficient way to swim? <laughs> it's so majestic. Oh, stay still. Maybe we won't notice you. <laughs> is it coming in for a landing? I don't know. Right on top of that dot? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to... Sliding tumble. In. He's gonna tumble. Oh no. We <laughs> <down>. <laughs> uh. no plans to stick to landing. No, my didn't oh, land. stick it, no. <laughs> All right. The recovery. So he's a embarrassed. Little, little bailing in peace. <laughs> Alright, can we do a gauge check, please? Roger. Chat I, understands my cuteness aggression. I, Thank you, chat. I bet to do that. Oh, what is going on? Stephanie, here? have you ever heard the presidency of the United States of America? Uh, the band and the song is named poke and destroy no shrimp it's talking about poke and destroy animals that's Boy. how you learn about no. them <laughs> as, as like a cuteness aggression thing or as like just an don't aggression you do thing same, same, same. i don't know <laughs> thank you we don't know come on you never like see like a cute cat and you just want to like squeeze it until its head pops off no oh no shrimp though shrimp though I do that with crawfish, though. Well, I mean, I don't actually want their heads to pop off. I'm not a monster. Well, I mean, at this point, prove it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. Can't. Okay, fair enough. Chat wants to know if we ever call Hercules Herc for short. All yeah. the time. All the time. In fact, I rarely say Hercules. That's his full government name. Government name. <laughs> Are we happy with this pace, science? Yeah, this is good. I mean, that's what Steve kind of wanted to if there's not much happening here, because I think they have a lot of stuff to be able to see up top. Yeah. we Because it's not a very steep slope, we could go a little bit faster. No, I think this is good. This is a good pace to see a lot of different things. Okay, great. If you're happy, I'm happy. Shrimp. Shrimp. Some of these fish really be swimming like fish. I'm going to change the camera for a sec. Pay no mind. Roger. Is it the middle push core I took? I think it was. <laughs> <coughs> Start easy. Um, I can read more great Herc memories. Um, someone wrote, my favorite memory is of the whale fall and how it was almost completely gone at the second season. Bone worms. I also love listening to the scientists sciencing and nerds nerding. <laughs> we like listening to chat chatting, so <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, bone worms, eh? What a, what a niche animal. It's so metal. <laughs> Make a good band name. Bone worm. Bone worm. Bone worm. <laughs> Someone else wrote, Happy 1000th dive, Herc. Been watching since 2016 and have lots of memories. 
grateful for the friends I've made and all I've learned and been able to share with others, not only back to folks in the van, but to the world at large via social media and my friend circle. I also love how OET supports and empowers women in STEM. Favorite memory? Um, uh, I lost my place in the, in the giant paragraph. More importantly, there is a band named Bone War, been around since 2012. Roger that, thank you. From Portland. Ah. It would be Portland. Shout out to Bone Worm. <laughs> <laughs> we got any Bone Worm fans in the chat. Raise your hands if you're a Bone Worm fan. There's another fish. A different fish. Are you going to leave us hanging on that special memory? Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted. Um, it was Herc's longest dive and uh. the excitement of resurfacing. Was Ax longest dive? Yeah, that's. Do you know? Sorry, talking Kirk about has the had a dive. The hour dive or the one week dive? Tim, is it 73? I thought it was 74 hours. It's the longest dive. Oh, probably 74. I think 74, because it happened to be my lucky number too. So that's why I think it is that. Oh, that's cool. Shrimp. 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 Wait, two or just one? One at the top, one at the right. Gauge check complete. <coughs> Ooh, the beefcake went up at the left. What do you call them? Buff, buff, buff shrimp. Buff Sorry. shrimp. Buff shrimp. A beefcake. <laughs> beefcake. Oh, <laughs> work. And there's, uh, is that another one? What, are, what is this? There's a, like it's like different a cucumber, but it's different. Oh, okay. Weird. There was one of the same ones that of that one that was on the rock. Why is it a deck frog, not a deck any other animal? The eyes. Frog eyes? Yeah. <laughs> the more you know. Someone says, I keep waiting for you to happen upon a chest of overflowing jewels and coins. Me too. <laughs> That'd be pretty neat. Shrimp. Fifty six now. Shrimp coat. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I was like lost in <laughs> my head. Five times fifty two. All right. Fifty two shrimp. We're past what we normally get in one dive. And I know. <laughs> what, one hour on the bottom? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, 2,000 shrimp. Here we go. Oh, wow. this is a buff shrimp coming up. Oh. This is a big, big a beef shrimp. Beefcake shrimp here. <laughs> and a tongue fish. And a tongue fish. <laughs> Professional shrimp. Oh, this <laughs> shrimp is pro. <laughs> this shrimp is a CEO. A CEO. <laughs> shrimp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, about an 11.4 centimeter shrimp here. <laughs> <laughs> that is one big shrimp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good for you, shrimp. I'm for the fish who is going to eat the <laughs> oh, shrimp. Oh, tasty, Ooh. juicy shrimp. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Chat shrimp. wants to know if anything shrimp. double shrimp? No, just little shrimp. Oh, little shrimp. Single. Chat wants to know if anything lives in the sediment. <gasps> yeah. Buy, More chat. worms, bivalves, different types of worms. Five zero meters. Five zero degrees. Hemicordatis. Small fauna Where like mayo fauna as well. <laughs> Let's 
It's like a halosaur coming yeah, in. Yeah, do the halosaurs graze from the sediment? What Should do I they eat? Shrimp? Well, Google can tell us that. They okay. prey mainly on benthic invertebrates like polychaetes, echinoderms, and crustaceans like copepods, but they also consume small fishes and cephalopods. So do you think they're looking for the little shrimps? Because they're all kind of facing the sediment. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, that's where the shrimp hang out. We need um, a vertebrate person. Yeah, nobody on this boat likes vertebrates. Nope. <laughs> nope. Invertebrates and bacteria only. <laughs> and rocks. I, I like vertebrates, but I think invertebrates uh, need more attention on a scientific perspective. Yeah. There, there's a lot of research on vertebrates, and there's like probably 90% of uh, species of invertebrates unknown. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we can Google what a halosaur will eat just tells you that exactly we've already studied them a lot. And, you know, I'm sure it's harder to Google what a squat lobster would eat, you know? You think you get that? I can Google it. Okay. I'll Google, will Google tell me what a squat lobster will eat? <laughs> should, I t should I put deep sea squat lobster since they're shallow ones? We're talking about deep sea critters? Yeah. yeah. We have an update in the front row. <laughs> I know, I'm waiting for oh, them to like settle yeah. in to tell it's everyone. It's going to be exciting. exciting. <laughs> I'm, I'm like... I'm, g I'm getting my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> um, NOAA Ocean Exploration says Squat lobsters generally eat small marine worms or crustaceans or scavenge on dead animals. Yeah, pretty accurate. Depending on the group of species. Some species are detritivorous, some species eat bacteria. Mm. Mm. Yeah, some uh, hydrothermal vent species mm -hmm. feed on the bacteria, the bacterial mat. Growing on their arms as and well. And the growing bacteria in their, in their calipids. And some species are predatory, like they Hunt? rip, rip at out the shrimp's head and they eat them. What about that um, mega squat that so we found by the woodfall? Those are detritivorous. Mm -hmm. That's why they are around woodfalls or uh, sponge debris, because they recycle dead uh, organic matter. They, they eat sediment and dead uh, sponges and things like that. And for those following along, we're passing waypoint three. Oh, wow, really? Oh. Passing waypoint three. <laughs> 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 I think that's me. <laughs> data logging. <laughs> Did you data log all these cucumbers? I have, sure have. Do you have to count every cucumber we're seeing? No, Should I do not. No, if it becomes like um, common, then I can just say that they're abundant across the substrate and describe the substrate. It, it, it's, it, it depends on the objective of the dive. If we were trying to do a sea cucumber survey, then I would be paying more attention to the exact mm -hmm. number. Oh. <coughs> Shrimp in the porch. Three more. <laughs> <laughs> that could be like a good song, Shrimp on the Porch. Shrimp on the Porch. There's five. Holotherians. Yeah. yeah. No, it, there's crazy cucumbers. Shrimp. Chat says vertebrates are old news. Agreed. I mean, <laughs> I can relate to vertebrates a bit more. <laughs> of course. What, what word? Aqua squatch. Aqua squatch. Is that a vertebrate or an invertebrate? I think, think aqua squatch is a vertebrate. Depends on what form he wants to take or she wants to take. What See. I want to take? Huh? What I want to take? No, what, the form that the uh, aqua squatch wants to okay. take. 
Ooh, we have a comment from Concha Hawken, PA. Hello, I'm from Philly. Neighbors. Nah. Um, I discovered your streams last year and put the dives in the background at work. It's like listening to someone explore an alien world with funny commentary the whole time. Thanks for helping to break up the monotony. Thanks, neighbor. Science Steve from down below also says if we find good sonar targets along the second half of the dive track, we can certainly ladder along the contours and check them out. Making good time. Cool. Yeah, it's kind of funny from the back row, you see the uh, the three heads in front of us, and it reminds me like of a Nautilus Science 3000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shrimp. A lot oh, of wow. Wow. What are we wowing? The all, the, all, the, all, the, all the cucumbers. Someone in the chat said shrimp and cucumber salad, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're oh, not wrong. Wow. <laughs> there are a lot. I imagine it'd be a lot less enjoyable with these cucumbers, though. Holothurians coming up. Holosaurs coming up. Holosaurs, yeah. Uh, yep, and more holosaurs. Look holothurians. at all these. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you think they're going to a party? Do you think they're going to a Herc 1000 dive party? A, a food fall. That's also a party, I guess. Yeah, it is. A deep sea buffet. Paula, we have a question for you in the chat. Whoa. Uh, do we know if squat lobsters that you're finding on this expedition gather bacteria or other things to feed on their associate corals? Um, well, uh, some species feed on bacteria, but uh, the species that live on corals, they probably feed on small creatures like small zooplankton animals or, or other small things that can uh, potentially uh, go in the in the water current. But uh, yeah, I would love to know that. It's a poorly known field. We don't know uh, what they, they feed, basically. What, what's that fish with the white on it? Yeah, let's zoom on it if it's possible. It's up okay, in we're going to zoom on. What was that? Sorry. It was. It's it, gone. It's gone. It went off the top left corner. Oh no! Is it gettable? Is it or is it floating? It was. I mean, it's a fish, so it was like kind of floating. It kind of looked like a holosaur with like white patches on it. All right, we'll get the next one. There was another one I saw a long time ago, so there might be like a another one. Shrimp. Shrimp. Can we announce what's happening in the front row? Yes. Yeah, so for all of you watching, uh, ROV intern Annabelle is piloting Herc. First time ever. So Annabelle's parents watch on the channel three or quad view. You could see her working her magic. Bridge, Nav. Yeah. Can we do same, 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 please? <laughs> Chat says if a sea cucumber falls into a brine pool, does it become a sea pickle? Oh, and Grandma's watching. <laughs> Annabelle's Grandma, I'm assuming. Yeah. Comments in the chat. Yes, we're so proud of you, Annabelle. Woo! Go, Annabelle. Let's go, Annabelle. Yay, Annabelle. Go, Beeves. Awesome, Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle's dad. Go Beeves. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I had no idea that that was their mascot, and now I'll never forget it. Ah, <laughs> uh, the memories we make on Nautilus. <laughs> oh, I think she's going to try to parallel park now. <laughs> Do a flip. <laughs> Do a donut. Do a donut. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, remember we were talking about shrimp posture the other day? I stumbled upon a meme um, of, it said at the top, uh, a photo of me working in the office and then it had a shrimp sitting on an office chair. Another chat message says, yay, Annabelle, I don't know you, but I'm very proud of you. So Annabelle is an ROV intern once again, and if you are interested in our internships, applications are usually due December 31st. So. Put it on your calendars. There's an ocean science internship, ROV internship, video engineering, and mapping and navigation. Yeah. Um, and they're all very great programs. As you can tell, we let our interns learn as much as they want to learn. Uh, Annabelle really wanted to pilot Herc, so here she is piloting Herc. Um, earlier in the expedition, she was learning how to use the craft arm, and now she's sampling our rocks and stuff for our watch. Internships provide great experience, but are also a great way to become involved with Nautilus in the future, because one of our ROV pilots used to be an ROV intern, and I used to be an ocean science intern. Yeah, and in addition to internships, um, my position is science communication fellow, which is open to educators, both formal and informal. So if you're a teacher or an informal educator, like I'm an illustrator, a natural science illustrator that does like museum graphics and children's books, uh, this is open to you. We also have a uh, muse museum educator on board as well as an academic coach. So a great opportunity for educators and uh, students as interns. We have a first time watcher asking about a streaming schedule. So we don't have streaming schedules posted because um, sometimes things like weather um, can prevent dives from happening, but we do post dive alerts on our um, social media pages on Instagram, Facebook, and X, formerly Twitter. And we also post the dive alerts on the update banner right above the stream on our website, nautiluslive.org. Is there an age limit for interns? I know you have to be 18, I believe. Yeah, usually um, university student. Yeah, so that could be community college, um, undergrad or graduate. I don't think there's like a limit, like a top limit to age, as long as you're a yeah. student. Yeah. Um, well, and you, it, you don't even need to be a student. Um, you could be recently graduated. Oh, that, yeah, that's good to know too. Yeah. Shrimp. Um, we were looking into like some criteria before and it's open to US citizens or if you have a work visa or a student visa for the US like um, Maranke and Trevor are from Canada. Yeah, and I don't I didn't have any sort of visa, but Canadians can apply because of the agreement that the US and Canada have. Um, Canadians can come to the States for internships under training. Yeah, all the information for our internships is on nautiluslive.org. If you click on education or if you click on join, what? there is a section for um, the, the internship information. Jet bomb? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, oh, can you start the mains? Shrimp. Can you start the mains? The main, the main engines? Yeah.
Yeah, we have some ripples in the uh, sediment now. Signs we're coming off bottom. The ship's having problems with their DP. Okay. okay. Spin your uh, heading to port, 180. Yes, that's good. And keep coming up. Yes. Now. <laughs> you see the interesting ripple pattern. <laughs> Almost looks like the uh, current be going around the atoll here, going from right to left, or that be north to south. It doesn't look like the marine snow is flowing in that direction, though. Well, because we're going up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Um, here's a cool memory someone has from Herc. Congrats, Herc, sending a huge hug. My favorite dive was the octopus garden. Rooting for the newly born octa, grabbed by a shrimp. It appeared the octa was doomed, but nah, brave little octa fought its way from the claws of the shrimp. Yahoo! Keep up the great work. It'll keep up the great wondrous work you do in providing a lens to the underwater world. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Another great Hercules message. Uh, happy 1,000th dive to Hercules. I knew about Nautilus or any ocean exploration live streams back in 2017 from my ex-girlfriend since she was a marine science student. At, the f at first, I didn't really get what was interesting about the live stream. I just watched it to make her happy. But here I am, always trying my best to watch the dives, no matter how long it is.
So for everyone wondering, we have left the bottom briefly while we um, work on getting the ship back into DP, which means dynamic positioning, where the ship kind of controls what position it's in. So we're just going to sit here until we troubleshoot the, the DP. Go for video. Go for video. Yeah, Annabelle. Great, thank you. We got a chatter from Italy. Ciao from Italy, thank you all for the fantastic work and congratulations to Herc on its 1000th dive. Love all the blue water chats and puns. They keep me entertained during my thesis work. My favorite Herc moment was the derby googly-eyed squid from the dive, oh, googly-eyed octopus from the dive on 24th May this year. Here's another great one, happy 1,000th dive. The lives always get me so excited. It feels like being with a group of friends, exploring new things. I think I pulled many of my friends to be interested in marine bio through your streams. Every time you get excited and discover something new, the emotions always transfer through the screen. Keep up the great work. My favorite, since I'm a recent viewer, would probably be seeing a Chanacops for the first time. It was such a bright red, I've never seen anything like it before. All of these messages are so sweet and I'm glad you all feel very um, attached to Hercules just as we are. For those of you wondering, we did come off bottom for a bit while the ship was working on keeping its DP dynamic positioning. Um, we are just waiting a little bit to make sure it's stable and then we should be going back down, but everyone need just, um, oh, we just gotta wait, so. Enjoy the marine snow. Yeah, enjoy the marine snow. And we will tell you as soon as we're headed back down.
Someone else in the chat said, I love these dives so much. I keep telling everyone about them. I just can't shut up about it. It's so fun and fascinating. <laughs> yes, tell everyone. Everyone you know, tell them. Nautiluslive.org. So we're nearing the end of the expedition. Uh, back row and anyone who's not busy with something, do, does any of you want to share what your favorite part of this expedition has been so far? The, wo the woodfall. The woodfall? Yeah, it was amazing. And um, processing the, the sample in the lab was also very fun because there was uh, ophiroids, worms, squat lobsters, gastropods, um, and a lot of things, amphipods, specialized to live in the in the wood. And I think it's amazing to find this concentration of uh, life, uh, like in a in a very a small uh, patch of of deep sea floor. And yeah, I think it was one of my favorite f moments. Yeah, I I reiterate Paula's claim about the woodfall. I really enjoyed that as well. And I also enjoyed watching the stars on the monkey deck. That was amazing. When we had the Perseids, the meteor mm -hmm. shower, I think that was August 12th or 13th. I forgot about that. And yeah. the long one that lasted like 15 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, that was amazing. And Dave's treats. <laughs> Dave's trains. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> and Trevor. Uh, yeah. You're welcome. And thanks, Trevor. <laughs> and thanks, all of you. You're an amazing team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing I kept telling my friends back home and my lab mates and colleagues is that everybody on the Nautilus is just so great. Like, the personalities reflect the academic prowess as well as cool. Well-rounded individuals. Yeah, it really is amazing bringing people with different backgrounds, different skill sets together for a month in very close quarters. Yeah. <laughs> it's a neat little sociological experiment. Yeah, I mean, whoever is in charge, OET and Ocean Exploration Trust, who was ever in charge of, like, sorting people into expeditions must like see the future or something like they do a phenomenal job of yeah. putting us even like this watch itself i'm sure i know for a fact i'd get along with any watch i was paired up with but um, we seem to get along especially conversationally like really well mm -hmm. we have a good flow going what are you trying to say <laughs> 
What am I trying to say? <laughs> Except when Rob's being mean to us. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying something nice. Rob's banter is part of the flow. <laughs> you gotta be cruel to be kind. That's all I can say. <laughs> If there is a bit of like a curveball in the conversation, like got to keep them on their toes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so having done this uh, for a while, like uh, like Trevor has, like Rob has, that kind of stuff, um, watches uh, are sometimes just a bunch of people uh, all doing their jobs and that kind of stuff, but you don't gel as a group. Uh, socially, maybe, you know, during the, the watch. Uh, sometimes it's like this and, and everybody gets along really well. Uh, there's a lot of interaction, give and take. Some bad jokes, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's uh, it's really fun when that happens. It, it adds another dimension to just doing your job. Uh, and, uh, and, and it doesn't always happen that way. So. Yeah. Members of the chat are saying their favorite memories from this expedition. Um, April says, my favorite memories from this expedition was the swimming crinoid and the dive that we saw three Dumbo octopus in one dive. Um, another chat said, my favorite moment from this expedition has to be the squat lobster wedding and they're never forgetting those dancing corn dog corals. Aww. I love that you guys love the squat lobster wedding and the dancing corn dog corals. I love them too. Another question in the chat is how big is the non science crew on the ship? So, on the ship, we currently have uh, 52 people, and about 17 of them, I think, are ship crew members. Um, and they all do an absolutely fantastic job taking care of the ship, taking care of us, um, working you know, 24 hours a day on different shifts just to make sure that we can do what we're doing here. And without them, like, we would not have a ship to do these dives off of. So thank you to the crew. I think on our Instagram, there's a highlight story of meeting the crew. Um, so go check that out. Um, they talk, they say who they are and what they do on the ship. Yeah, and someone in Kansas is, uh, with the warm temperatures, is very thankful for the marine snow. They'll take anything like that to make it feel cooler. I do have a bit of a request. Uh, here's a quote. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in.
Thank you. signs yes yes so based on where we are if we can check the ipad screen do you want us to go you know a bit like um to the right before we start moving ahead or like this is fine to start proceeding forward let me i'm trying to pull up the uh, <laughs> uh yeah can you zoom out a little bit zoom out okay yeah, just work our way back to waypoint four. If that if that's okay. Waypoint four, or th we no, we were we were going from waypoint three to four before we lost it. So yeah, we're asking if we want to Do we make up the ground that we missed being. In the no, water that's boat. okay. Not at all. Sorry about that. Just continue on to waypoint four. What whatever we land. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. That's probably where the pot of gold and the wreck was and everything, but that's oh, okay. Just bounce over that, that's fine. All right, I'm 35 off bottom, you're 50. Yeah, explain that, science. <laughs> yeah. It's just me talking to myself. <laughs> it's just Trevor. <laughs> All right, bottom in sight. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, a question about uh, the uh, rain snow sample to resolve the scientific questions about ballasting and particle settling rates. I, I believe there are some studies, but there, are, you know, more recently there's been a lot of studies look at the uh, <coughs> the contents of morphology and the phytoplankton to understand uh, phytoplankton blooms and uh, to determine the uh, the export to the seafloor. So that's kind of part of the uh, the aspect of it. Nice, we're headed back down. Yay, ripples. And rocks. And rocks. More rocks. Yeah, Herc is oriented looking west. And so you can see these ripples and that orientation showing current flow. Okay, we can come to a stop on the winch there. Perpendicular to our heading, either north to south or south to north. Are you going to turn around or do you want me to turn around? I want you to turn around. You can go to starboard. Roger. Take a little landslide or something here. Debris flow. Just off to the right. Oh, turning on auto heading would help. Mm -hmm. That would that would be great. <laughs> uh, one of the first steps. <laughs> one of the first steps. <laughs> what was my bias? Thirty five, I think. Always it was? forget to turn on auto heading. <laughs> you remember in a hurry. Yep. When I click the button and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Ooh, there's a big, big shark or something down there. Ooh. Ooh. That's a weird way to swim. <laughs> Don't judge it. I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm just pointing out the obvious. It's vertical. Going All right, you can come down on horizontally. Delta too, Roger, Is that where you're coming down about? on Delta? But that yeah. Was I'm not sure what it was. There's no way to know.
There's Herc. All right. Hello. I'm going to come down a little more. Get yep. a little cozier with the bottom. Roger. On my way. And... So I think we can ask for a ship move, please. It's almost just like where we left off. Mm-hmm. Like nothing ever happened. Yeah. Oh, what's that? that we, we what? What is, is that? that? Sure, you can switch. Yeah. In you can the do a cinema reset. cam. What? Yeah, to the top left. Is that a what? big squiggly? A big squiggly. Here it comes into view. It's oh, going. look at the proboscis on that thing. Oh. Ouch. Oh, it just is that a squid? Going? It just ate something. Is it a squid? It's like a long squid. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's it's going to do it again. Okay, we can zoom in on it, please. Doink? What is it? It's really far away, but I'll wow. Yeah, it's not like one piece. Uh, yeah, it's a squid. Yeah, so can we do, can we step five zero meters, two to five degrees? Point two knots. So cool. Ouch. Spinning. Just feel it his way along the seafloor. That's really cool. Good shot of it in the cinema cam. Channel Can three for those of you watching. Oh, look at its eye. You can see its eye. Wee. Goodbye. Spin. All right, you can come wide. Wow. I know you got to do a handover. Oh, shrimp. So oh. Shrimp. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. All right, so you got us set up to go towards waypoint four? Yeah. All right. Oh. <coughs> oh. Okay, no, I got that right. Shrimp. Shrimp. Shrimp, shrimp. So for those of you wondering, DP means dynamic positioning, and it is like almost like an autopilot that the ship has so it can stay in place without getting moved around by the current. See Ben? Dave's back in the room. See Lila? Minutes ago. Like two. Little detour there. Mm -hmm. Shrimp. How far away from waypoint four are we now? We are about two four zero meters away. Thank you. Of course. So in chat, where is camera three located? Camera three or channel three? Um, on NautilusLive.org is what we call a, our cinema cam. It is a cam camera that's mounted on the porch of Hercules. Um, it can't tilt. It's stationary. It's stable. Um, so it kind of provides us with what I call like a worm's eye view, <laughs> um, as opposed to like Herc's more like downward angle. Look at this neat seam in the sand. Yeah, it's interesting cool. change in slope here. Looks like it slopes down to the right a little bit more. It's a little flatter to the left. It looks like there's a, a, look -see. a debris flow ahead of us. I just saw the toe of it. There's a little ridge. The toe. It's crazy that we climbed like three to four hundred meters before, but it looked, you know, it didn't look that we were climbing that much. Annabelle's yeah. winch hand would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just to our little little eyes back here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> little science eyes. Or at least little my science little eyes. science eyes. Your eyes are so small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's our bearing to the waypoint for? 225. 225, thank you. What do your little science eyes see? Right now? Yeah. Shrimp. Shrimp. <laughs> shrimp! <laughs> Is that a professional shrimp? Mm. I don't know. It looks pretty buff. Looks see. like. I think it's just an apprentice. Let's uh. see. <laughs> Maybe an intern shrimp? Show some love for the intern shroom. <laughs> we love you, intern shrimp. Yeah, intern shrimp for sure. Yeah. Is that a um, crag on a day? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Just a shirt. <laughs> Probably oh, a pantalla. No. <laughs> no. No, Cracconi, they are, uh, they What's have a really there? hard... Can you zoom in, please, Dave? What's the squishy? Yeah. Hard, it's a skeleton. The squishy? A little squishy. Microfish? Oh. Curly. Curly critter. Ah. This is not easy to see. It's another, is it another little baby? Some sort of baby fish. Yeah, yeah. Like that's oh, what it looks like this. Wow. That one looks pretty fresh, fresh too. Hatch. Yeah. Pretty new, pretty yeah. fresh. You think we're gonna find a bunch of empty eggs somewhere? Uh -huh. All these babies? All right, thanks, Dave. A nursery. The ripples are nice. I still can't, I still can't I get over that little Chanakops baby. The ripples are really cool. It had the like ten mile stare in its eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Top right. So new to this Shrimp. world, and yet it had seen so much. I wanted to see <laughs> so excited too much. to see the ripples on the Imagine continent. being a fresh-born baby well, and seeing, seeing it's like, you know, with a uh, visual eye, like, it's, it's so, so cool. Like, when we see, like, big ripples like this on the multi-beam, like, you, you feel like, oh, this is funny. We're, like, now seeing it live and direct, it's like, oh, my. Yeah, you kind of you kind of get like a double yeah. perspective. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Scan to the right, you see like a debris flow here. Yeah. Is or a, or a chunk of uh it's yeah, it's yeah, a slab yeah. of stuff that came down off the slope. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, it's really really cool. I love it. That's what I was seeing earlier. Ripple. Well, the ripples on it, so, so it's been here a while. So it's not really a debris flow, it may be just a chunk that slid off from above. Um, a question in the chat is, why do most fish still have eyes down at those depths? Is it because they participate in vertical migration? Um, they say, I think in Centos in Mexico, We're where going there are fishes you know. that don't... Cenotes. Cenotes. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read. Um, <laughs> in Mexico, where there are fishes that don't have eyes anymore because they live in caves and there's no light penetrating it. I presume the eyes from them became obsolete because of that, so it would preserve energy to not have them if you don't use them anyway. But light does not penetrate these depths either, right? So why do they still have eyes? Because there are light. There is light because of the bioluminescence. Mm. And, and there is very few but there are, there you can find light. I mean, and just because they have eyes doesn't mean they work like our eyes do. Mm -hmm. Rock. Yes. That's this is very reefy looking. Yeah. Reefy looking rock. Look, rocks. we have <laughs> here. Uh, right, it's coming up right there. Yeah, can we well, zoom we on this? We zoom on that crustacean. Up. Oh. Okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, this definitely looks reefy. Yeah. Reefinacious. Rifonsky. Is that a science term? No. <laughs> it's a rock science term. <laughs> Roger. Okay. There's definitely caves in this, right? Definitely what? Do you, there's definitely caves under here, you think? Oh, right? it might be. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's hard to tell if these are ripples or just part of the uh, original rock here from the sand. Now that must be the uh, sand ripples.
fish. Yeah, big blocks of reef here. Big blocks of reef. The, this like scenery view is really nice too. So once again, for those of you watching at home, we are off bottom while the ship does some corrections to its dynamic positioning system. Um, we'll, we're just gonna sit here for a moment and let the ship uh, correct itself. Question in the chat is, hi, would dating the reef help you in your research? Rob. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things you could do with dating the reef. Uh, if, if, I mean, since it's layers upon layers, what would be really cool or interesting is to do a drill into it and use different ways to measure the uh, the ages as you go deeper into this region. Also get an idea of potentially the, uh, the subsidence of the area, the rates of subsidence and these sorts of things. So it's a... Uh, it would be interesting to be able to date the reefs. I mean, grab some of these samples and date it, but just grabbing something on the surface right now isn't really going to be useful because we don't really know the location because these things could have uh, formed over quite a while. But if we know if the stuff on the top is going to be usually younger on the reef, if it's in place, and older as you go deeper, so we can kind of get an age of uh, the history of the reef over time. But just grabbing random samples really isn't going to help us that much.
So if we're seeing reef here, that means the atoll was a lot larger, like a lot higher off the surface than it used to be? You're muted. It's kind of recording the uh, subsidence of the feature over time because uh, the deeper portions of the reef were exposed near the surface, probably within 200 meters of the surface. And over time, as the seafloor ages, it's going to uh, sink into the ocean and then the corals will keep growing on top of it, trying to keep growing as long as they can. And they have been able to keep up, you know, to create the atoll, but some of the other geos that uh, maybe it subsides where the corals can't keep up, or sea level rises too fast and it can't keep up. question about living on the ship. Uh, what are the living quarters on the ship like? Do you have private or shared rooms? So I think most of us share a room. We have like bunk beds. There's some rooms that have two bunk beds, some rooms that have one bunk bed. Um, we're all on different shifts. The, the ship is working 24 seven. We have three different watches that we're all assigned to. So I know with like my bunk mate, uh, me and her have different watches, so it, it's kind of really easy to like have the room to ourselves to get ready and go to sleep. They're very comfortable, very spacious. Uh, question for bio, have you found microplastics in your samples? Not at this moment. Or is anyone looking for microplastics in deep sea samples? A, lo a lot of people are studying microplastic. There is a paper uh, published recently. Okay. Okay. Roger. Um, okay, folks, some news about the uh, standby blue water we have. We are going to recover our vehicles um, in order to do some maintenance on the ship's dynamic positioning system. Um, that system just makes sure the ship can stay in one place so we can um, have our ROVs on the floor safely. So we'll be taking them back up and doing maintenance. Keep up to date on our social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, as well as our website for any future dive updates we hope um, to have soon. For those of you who have been with us for the last uh, like four-ish, three and a half hours, uh, thank you for joining Hercules' 1,000th dive from the EV Nautilus. A uh, little surprise in the bio box there, uh, an original watercolor painting of Hercules in celebration. Um, while it was a short dive, I think we saw a lot. Like, it was very exciting. We saw a shark. We saw a shark. And a lot of cucumbers. And a lot of shrimp. The shrimp count total was 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 68 in three and a half hours. That is crazy. I love the draw 
massive. We're still getting lots of love and congratulations for our thousandth dive. Um, thank you all for joining us for it. It's so sad it got cut short, but at least we got a high shrimp count, someone said. Yeah, we did. Record-breaking high shrimp count. Record-breaking high shrimp count on par. In fact, I think it's actually the most shrimp we've counted. And for the shortest yet dive. Yet for the shortest dive, too. Yeah, because I think the highest was 59. What did we get this dive? 68. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. record. Efficient. And we got the C pen. And we got the C pen. Yeah. So we only got, we got two samples, right? We got the push core and the C pen. And the rock. Did we, we get, a rock get a rock too? Yeah. We did. No, did no, we? no? we didn't get it. No. It was well We tried to, yeah. That's right, yeah. All right, let's uh, come wide, please. I'm going to close this box, get the little setup. Thank you for that wonderful treat for the thousandth dive. That was awesome. That was a great thing. You're welcome. It was fun. <coughs> All right, I am coming up a little faster now. You can speed up just a bit. Gotcha. What am I making? 23, 22, kind of thing? I don't know. Well, it looks like Stephanie's stepped out. In the meantime, what's everybody's third favorite vegetable? <laughs> no, no one, no one, no one biting. Third favorite? Third favorite vegetable. What's your third favorite vegetable? Um. Chicken. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw a specific question. I don't know. Maybe corn. Mm. 
What's better than corn? Um, Lima beans? Popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours, Trevor? I don't know. <laughs> Too much pressure. Uh, I'm going to say golden beets. Golden beets. If my husband were, were here, he would say chickpea. Chickpeas? Oh, it's a, yeah. it's a good, it's I a like good chickpeas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big squash fan, though. Squash, really? zucchini, yuck. Do you like zucchini bread? Zucchini oh, loaf? Only if I don't know it's zucchini bread. You think it's banana bread, but then you're tricked. Exactly. Yeah, right. What about pumpkin bread? Oh, that's Ooh, great. That's great. Yeah. What about pumpkin pie? Love Ooh, it. Love it. What about pumpkin? Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 any kind of any kind of bread or pie? Was there a shrimp? No. <laughs> oh, I thought I heard shrimp. Carrot cake. On. Disabling testers. Zucchini bread. Sure. Hiding the vegetables. Well, that's it. You're hiding the vegetables. But banana bread, it just, the bananas go bad, so you got to use them somehow. I used to buy bad bananas. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I switched to USPL. They're just, they're going north. Keep up, wait for me. So does anybody have plans for the weekend? Might have some ice cream on Sunday. Ooh. I was thinking about a trip to Hawaii. It's <laughs> exciting. Yeah, I was actually planning on leaving to go to Hawaii this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Wait, really? You too? Yeah. Weird, like a small world, right? Maybe work a little bit and have Whoa. a sunbath. Uh, sunbath. Oh, oh, sunbathe. Sunbathe. Okay. Ooh, siphonophore or something. Siphonophore. Yeah, I was thinking about doing a little boating. <laughs> <laughs> Go on a cruise. What about you? I said I was going to go do a little boating.
Yeah, please. Oh, were you guys talking about food again? There's a lot of food in the chat. Yeah, we're talking about fav third favorite vegetable. Yeah, what's your third favorite vegetable, Stephanie? Third favorite vegetable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walked away and I had to take take the reins. It just you spirals out of control. Oh, yeah. gosh. I can't do what you do. What shark did we see, chat wants to know? I don't know. I was trying to look uh, for a uh, species ID of the shark. Yeah, I was thinking it was I'm a cat shark. It was so cute. That's wh that's what kind of shark it was. It was a cute one. It was a cute one. That's the most important part. Um, someone asked, did the movement of the ship make it hard to do that illustration? Not really. I mean, I got used... I, in the beginning, I do sketchbook stuff a lot. And in the beginning, it was like maybe a little seasickening. But I got used to it, and it's not super hard at all. I draw a lot on planes, too, and it's very similar. I keep trying to hit your elbow while you're drawing, too. You would. Someone asked, do you have a back-on-shore party when the expedition is over, or do you all go home ASAP? Uh, I have a backup on shore. Uh, I have an opposite number, and uh, we switch places. We uh, use the same cabin, so we use we leave our stuff in storage and uh, in the cabin, and we switch places. He's uh, video lead, and comes out, and uh, then he'll have his crew of interns, that kind of stuff. So coming up on the next uh, on the next expedition, the lead video engineer is going to be a brand new lead video engineer. Uh, she's been in training. Uh, she was a video intern at one time, then came back a couple of times as a contractor, uh, and then went away and finished school, and then came back, and uh, she's our video lead in trainee. Her name's Amber Flynn. And uh, so she's going to be taking the lead position for the first time around. Roger, slowing down. There's a, a like a very um, respectfully worded comment in the chat asking about um, like mechanical issues for ROVs and the ships, um, if they're like common. Roger or mm -hmm. uncommon um and i like you got to think about it like the ship's running 24 7 for what like six months at a time and like i guess if you think about it like how often do you have to service your car or something and you don't drive that nearly as much as we're driving these ships um you know 24 hours a day well i mean plus we have a certain weather window that we can actually yeah. operate in i mean in you have a hurricane come through, the wind cut picks up every once in a while, the currents. I mean, it's, I mean, even this dive, we were on the edge of should we, shouldn't we? And yeah. We thought it was important enough to try to get this dive in in this location. And we all, we always need to make sure that our equipment and us on the deck and in the ship are remaining safe. So it's, it's yeah. not easy out here. It's always safety first. Yeah. And I appreciate that. As much as I love diving. I mean, it's always great to see the uh, the ROV crew before launch or recovery. They get together in the little safety meeting and review everything in detail. I don't listen in, but I can kind of just hear that, see what they're doing, pointing. And yeah. Ooh, and jelly. You know, despite Ooh. these obstacles, um, the ROV team as well as the ship crew really like come together and power through and fix things pretty efficiently for being, you know, in the middle of the ocean. Oh, there's a... Oh, this is a lantern shark. Okay, that... I'm not sure if it's the same we saw. It kind of looks like it had a, a longer tail than the cat, cat sharks I've seen. That's why I kept wondering and looking it up. Uh, 
another question is, where is the control room on Channel 3 located? In the middle of the ship? Um, I think if you experience seasick, it's hard to have windows. You can look outside. Um, okay, so the control room, if you, like, look up a picture of the ship, you'll see, like, this, um, at the top of it, there's, like, a blue, like, what is it, like, an exhaust vent? A smokestack. A smokestack, the blue smokestack. Um, and then there's also that, like, golf ball satellite. In between that, there is a white rectangle. That is the control room. It is three tall shipping containers, about the size of three tall shipping containers uh, put together. Um, and that's where we're sitting. It does not have windows. And during transit, if this the waves and swells are a little big, it does get a little seasickening in here. Um, but when we're on watch, I'm you know distracted enough to not even think about any waves or sw swells. Another person in the chat asks, is there going to be another dive before the 29th? I hope so. We're, We're hoping to get one more in. Mm-hmm. Fingers crossed. I would love one more to say, like, a proper goodbye to the world. <laughs> so I would like to go back to the question of the microplastics. Oh, yeah, I go ahead. I'm sorry. I wanted to explain that there is a paper studying the stomach content of deep sea animals and they found microplastics in animals living in hydrothermal vents. So yeah. The in the hydrothermal vents. Yeah. And the stomach content of the animals living on there. So yes, the answer is yes, the microplastics are in the deep ocean and it's estimated the microplastics to be increasing unfortunately. That's crazy. The specimens that we collect, say if someone is researching microplastics, are they able to... To extract the microplastics? Yeah, from yeah. our specimens? Yeah, they will be able uh, centrifuging and extracting some tissues and studying. I, I have a colleague who was, uh, his PhD was microplastic in the Mediterranean Ocean. And it was stunning the findings he was, uh, his results about the microplastics. It's a wow. scary. Yeah. Some of them can be really, really tiny, or, uh, microscopic, and most of them are in, the in um, pr products of uh, beauty, like creams or mm -hmm. sunscreen and things like that. <laughs> so, yeah. I say with a, I, I listen to with a full face of makeup on. <laughs> no, I just like a. I don't like doing the, you know what I mean? Who is that? Michael. <laughs> I know. Oh, hello. hello. Hey, this is like the best dive right here. This is the best part. I'm so glad I came here. And you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be here on the recovery. I don't know. <laughs> what, you're you're in recovery? What? <laughs> yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hello from Panos also a video. <laughs> <laughs> Um, someone asked, why might there only be one more dive before the 29th? It's only the 25th. Well, we'll have to transit to a new location, I'm guessing, right? Are we... Um, yeah. And it's going to take a couple of days. Yeah, I think it takes back. like, you know, 20 hours or so. Well, I think it's about a three-day transit. Yeah, and then the transit's three days. Yeah. So we can't, it's not like we can dive on the, you know, 27th or 28th. We'll have to be transiting. Here's a nice question that'll take up some time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, <Where is laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't muted. <laughs> You're good. Um, they said, I asked one of the other watches this question, but it would love to hear from you guys on this take as well. As an ocean exploration and surveying student at Plymouth University in the UK, going into a final year, do you guys have any advice for getting into the industry? How did you all get where you are? Thanks in advance. Career question, that Maraca sucks. is raising her hand. That sucks. <laughs> I could go first. Um, yeah. Just from my perspective, if you're interested in going the science route, the ocean science route, and coming onto Nautilus as an ocean science intern, I basically started with my first marine science course in 2017, and I didn't do anything marine related um, until then. But then after that, I started racking up 
intern shallow water ocean science internships to strengthen my application and my reference letters for deep sea internships because there's a lot more shallow water stuff going on. So for the anybody listening really, because there are American positions as well, but especially for the Canadians listening, there's internships at the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences. Um, they do UK, American and Canadian internships again, but they're the only institute that I've ever uh, found out of from Google that have a program specifically for Canadian students. Usually Canadian students don't have as many opportunities to get involved in ocean science as American students, so that's a really good place to start. And then you can enter internships where you're competing against the Americans as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just did like about three shallow water internships in between undergrad and graduate school, and then I applied to the Nautilus didn't get it the first time, applied again the following year, got it that year. And that's how I ended up getting here, getting that background experience first and being tenacious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm sure there are opportunities at the, uh, the NOC in Southampton in the UK for uh, British students. Yeah. Um, I think Elias is busy, but I know Elias is, you know, is a, is a surveyor. He studied survey. Um, I could circle back to the question when he's not busy. Um, circling back to the microplastics question, do you collect water samples at these depths in which this is studied? Yeah, we collect uh, water samples, but uh, the scientists that are interested in water samples are more interested in the eDNA of the, uh, that is, eDNA is fragments or DNA that are co uh, come from the tissues, the mucus, and from some uh, particles in the water. And with these eDNA samples, the researchers can um, detect how is the community, how diverse is the community, and they can also target some species specifically from the eDNA in the water column. And this is the kind of samples and the kind of water samples we are collecting. But yeah, I guess we could also extract microplastic from uh, water samples, but so far we haven't done so. It would be interesting though, and yeah. we have a program of uh, scientists ashore. So if anyone is interested in uh, studying microplastic in the deep sea, could uh, request samples or could be um, um, join our program of scientists ashore, and uh, we happily could provide samples of water. Yeah, the same um, person in the chat asks what the name of the paper that you were talking about is. Yeah, I'll check it out because I don't know I don't know it by memory, and I'll copy in the chat so you can can see it. Yeah, that's a good idea. A mysterious chatter said, Steph, your brother just asked a question. Can you guess which question? Is it the do fish have feelings question? <laughs> that sounds like a Sam question to me. Oh, you have the paper? Yeah, it's in the chat. I can't see that chat. If you want to just like so pass it. So the name is first record of microplastics in some uh, metilide, which are deep sea bivalves living on cold seas and hydrothermal vents, and Shinkaya granieri, which is a deep sea squat lobster living also in hydrothermal vents in uh, in some areas in the Pacific. 
so. Is there like a way they can easily look that up instead of typing the whole name? Like. Yeah, just go to Google Scholar and type microplastics in and cold sips. Okay. Maybe you can have it. The lead author is Tang. Last name spelled T as in Tom, E N G. Cool. Huh? All right. We are going, some of us are going to do a watch change so we can go have lunch. Thank you again for joining the 1,000th uh, dive of Hercules from the EV Nautilus. Um, it was a pleasure to spend these last four, three-ish and a half, four hours with you guys. Um, I had a great time. Thank you for all your great comments. I read every single one myself. If I said it or not, um, I'm sorry I couldn't get to your comment if I didn't speak it out loud. But we did read them all, and we saved them all for everyone else on board to read. Um, so here is Ashley. Hello everyone, this is Ashley Glickley, Science Communication Fellow, taking over for Steph. And it's a pleasure to have Rob by my side you, for you, you 30 say that, seconds. You say that with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> and we are currently ascending with our vehicles to troubleshoot some issues with the dynamic positioning system that we have on board. The chat is still open if you have any questions or comments. Please feel free. <sighs> yeah. Big bummer. Yeah, oddly enough, Jane and I would probably be hanging out together back in Rhode Island. I wouldn't be hanging out with you. Well, we, we'd be in the same environment. Yes, that's <laughs> true. Shout out to Shades On <laughs> Brewery in Kingston, Rhode Island. <laughs> Is that hanging out? Same location. Maybe we should. That's loitering. Oh, <laughs> loitering. Hey, I get paid to be there. <laughs> Only one of us does. She would be serving me. <laughs> I think we should all hang out there. Yeah, you're all invited. Van Data Lab, RV, could you secure power to the cinema camera? That was Tim asking about power to the cinema camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> Secured. Thank you very much. Yeah, we saw some cool tuna on the way down. Yeah, I saw nice. those. One mahi, Were too. they tuna or were they jacks? They could have been jacks. Yeah, I couldn't really tell. I mean, it, it definitely there was one mahi there. Oh, really? 
With the male or female? I didn't. Did it have a I yellow didn't get head that or close. not? Well, I, I just saw the shape of the. Oh, okay. I didn't look at the. Uh, So what was your favorite thing on this dive so far? So far. <laughs> uh, Did you guys say a shark, somebody said? Yeah, it's a yeah. cool shark. I like how so much of it still remains within our hopes and dreams. <laughs> I like the, uh, the squid, the long squid. That was cool. There was a long squid? Yeah. Kind of looked like a spear. Long, skinny, thin squid. I must have slept through that one. <laughs> Did it look like the halosaurs, another fish we've seen? It looked, had a similar initial shape, but it was definitely a squid. Okay. That was like the last half hour or something in the blue water while you were waiting around? No, it was, we're, we're, it was on the bottom. Oh, really? And it was scooting along, you know, you know. I was watching the whole time you guys were on bottom. I didn't see that one. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it kept going into the ground and backing off. So we didn't know if it was feeding or just running into things. Hmm. But it was going in tentacles first. Neat. So we did have a couple of questions in the chat about the dynamic positioning. Um, Rob, do you know how that works? Uh, it's basically uh, thrust <laughs> in whatever direction is fighting the current, I think, to stay in the same orientation and in the same coordinate location. Yeah, the, you know, it uses a satellite differential GPS to keep try to maintain its location. Yeah. And and also when they do their their jumps, try to keep that steady motion towards that. And every once in a while, I think when the seas are rough or the currents are high or the wind is blowing, for some reason, something anomalous will happen and things will lock mm. in, a, in a different direction. And that makes I, sense. They, they have to reset things, and it takes a while to reset it. And so after a while, that kept that happened a couple of times. They re realized it just. It was too rough, not great conditions to maintain this. And it wouldn't be so bad if we're, we'd be end up backing down onto the atoll itself. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. We oh, don't so we are, it is line. actually weather related then. It's that yeah. the, the current is too strong on the surface. I yep. see. Yeah. Uh, and you might pay out to see one it five zero if you look at different views from the camera. But our swell is pretty strong. And yeah. Has been Honestly, looking off the back deck cam right now, it doesn't seem like it, but there's actually way more wh white caps out there than you can really yeah. see on that screen. So yeah, um, in the chat they were asking about how that affects the ROVs. So the ROVs are tethered to the boat. So if we're not able to maintain position um, with our dynamic positions po positioning system, I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that today. You shorten it, I guess. <laughs> DP. The DPS. Um, then it can cause problems with the ROVs. And like Rob was saying, we're getting closer to the atoll, so. Yeah, and, and we thought that we were gonna be shallower today, so we could be at closer to the edge. Yeah. And so, because the, the deeper you are, the more stress it puts on the whole system if you're bouncing up and down. Oh, so. that totally makes sense. It also will make recovery slightly trickier than, yeah. than most recoveries I, I've heard. I think we got the crack team on it downstairs, though. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a good thing we have a lot of Really highly qualified, experienced very intelligent, people. experienced people on this boat. If they aren't now, they will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the things I've really enjoyed watching is just how people pivot and are able to deal with, you know, things that come up that we don't necessarily plan for, right? It's, it's one of my favorite sayings anytime I talk to people, I'll go to sea. Yeah. A couple of quotes. I mean, Eisenhower in uh, uh, Churchill had a similar one saying, planning is essential, plans are useless. Yeah. And Mike Tyson, very similarly, the great philosopher, said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> JFK said, we chose to go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Not because it is easy. Oh, I messed that one up. But you got it. You got <laughs> I guess, are you saying we got punched in the face? No, it's just, a, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's amazing how, like you said, pivot, people adapt. Yep. I mean. Yeah, as a teacher, that's something that I really work hard to teach my students how to do. You know, not everything is going to work according to the plan that you make. And being able to think on your feet is essential. Yeah, but sometimes I like to throw tantrums <laughs> about it. I kind of am doing that internally right now. I misinterpreted that. You said 
Think on your feet. I thought stink on your feet. <laughs> stink that on was, your feet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kids are good at that. <laughs> <laughs> After three weeks on the boat, I think I'm getting. I think pretty all good of our feet stink pretty bad <laughs> on the boat. They do have showers. Oh, what? Really? <laughs> Telling me this now? It's been 30 days. I've all been, this time, I've, I've been. I've been meaning to tell you. <laughs> Uh, you have not to sit next to a, next to me in the van in the <laughs> chair. Right. Think watches. of how to say it nicely. <laughs> no. no, he wouldn't think to say it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good question. Have we ever come across a shipwreck on accident? Um, not that I know of. I think most of the shipwrecks we found have been on purpose, planned, and. I've been to a few with other ROV systems in shallower shallower waters, like mesophotic systems. We've come across a couple of small wrecks. Um, been pretty cool. Nothing like too uh, notable or historic. What's this? Front row, do you need us to quiet down? Okay, thank you. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and miss our jokes about not showering? <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> waka waka. It'd be great if you guys could laugh on SPL so it doesn't sound like dead air after my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> we should, uh, I feel like it'd be fun to switch up the watches every once in a oh, while. Oh, I didn't mean to stop. New, new faces, new jokes, new personalities. You know, new faces, old jokes. Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> We just tell each other the same jokes. <laughs> she's, 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 she's the audience. Someone's asking which which units of measure do we use, metric or or imperial units, and I think we pretty much stick to metric most of the time. Except nautical miles. <laughs> you have to do everything. You have to go nautical miles, nautical inches, nautical centimeters. Yeah. Oh look, there's a little school. Ooh, Ooh pretty. Nautical light years. Is that Atlantis view? Yeah. Finally, it happened to me. You've been waiting for that school. It's the most bio I'll see all day. On this watch, on my watch anyway. We are now in recovery mode. All-station holding at five zero meters. Deck control. Winch at five zero meters. Control deck, go ahead. Winch at five zero meters. Right, taking control. Bezo has stopped, yeah. yeah. 
Are you off SPL? Okay, that explains why you're a little off. No, that's fine, that's fine. Control? Uh, control, this is the bridge. Is it possible to call about 045 degrees? Uh, please say again, over. Bridge control. Control, this is the bridge. Yes, can we maintain this heading and move 045 degrees? Okay, copy that. Maintain this heading and track 045 at uh, 0 0.3 knots. Is that correct? Roger. Well, yeah, very correct. Thank you. There, control, can we hold the winch? Can we stop the winch? Can we stop the winch? I'm stopped at one five meters. Roger. Control deck, uh, just for your reference, I have a visual on the Atlanta and Herkers running uh, pretty much straight off the port quarter, over to port quarter. Control copies. Bridge copies that. So you're saying we can continue the conversation? Are we bothering you if we're talking? Okay. Um, Jane, there's a question in the chat asking, have we seen the green flash while we've been at sea? Have you seen any green flashes while? No, they don't exist. <laughs> oh, this is the I conspiracy. feel strongly that it's a myth. <laughs> Rob feels otherwise. <laughs> I don't know. I think I saw a green flash. <laughs> 